Okay. For example, 4 and 1 eighth times 2 over 11. Okay. Before we can do this problem, we have to change the 4 and 1 eighth to an improper fraction. So we have to take 4 times 8, which is equal to 32, plus 1, which is equal to 33. So you have 33 over 8 times 2 over 11. You do not Okay, you do not have to have common denominators to multiply <coughs> fractions and mixed numbers. Okay, now, okay, cross canceling. We can cross cancel. Okay, cross-canceling means that I look at the top fraction, you look at the numerator of one fraction and the denominator of, of the other fraction to see if there is common factors between 33 and 11. Is there a common factor between 33 and 11? Yes. What? 11. 11. So I can divide 11 into 11, it goes one time, and I can divide 11 into 33, it goes three times. Okay? Then is there a common factor? between 8 and 2. 2. So I divide 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 8 goes 4 times. So now I have 3 over 4 times 1 over 1. Now I just multiply it out. 3 times 1 on top, 4 times 1 on bottom, which is equal to three-fourths. Now, if I didn't cross-cancel, I would still eventually get the same answer providing that I reduce the fraction properly. For example, let me show you. If I had 33 over 8 times 2 over 11, Okay, if I just multiplied 33 times 2 and 8 times 11, that would give me 66 over 88. Well, I can reduce that by 22 over 22. 22 goes into that three times. 22 goes into that four times. Okay, so one way or the other, you have to reduce it Sometimes it's just easier to do it with the cross-canceling instead of simplifying the fraction at the end. Either way is correct, okay, if you do the math right, okay, and people make careless mistakes using both ways, so I can't really say, well, this way usually people make this mistake. Yes, Celine? What do you mean, will it always work? I mean, you can always, yeah, just multiply them straight across. The problem is you're going to use, you're going to get into numbers that are going to be so large that, you know, you may have 1,292 over 366, and then you've got to reduce that. Instead of maybe reducing it with cross-canceling, the numbers are easier to see. But, yes, you can always just multiply straight across, get the answer, and reduce it. Okay, now, what if they don't give us mixed numbers or whole numbers? 
Well, in this case, we still do the same thing. You look to see if there's any common factors between 12 and 1. Is there? There's not? Okay, 1. There is a common factor, but 1 doesn't help us any. Is there any common factors between 1 and 10? Well, obviously 1 doesn't help us any. So this one, you just take 1 times 1, 10 times 12. 1 over 120. Okay, so we didn't have to change anything to improper fractions. We didn't have to reduce it. We just simply multiplied it out. There will be some that are like that. Okay, um, if you have this, 1 fourth times 50. Okay, well 50 is is a whole number, but I still have to change change it to an to an improper fraction. And what is 50 is an improper fraction. 50 over one. Right. 50 over 1. Okay. Now I look at it and say, okay, can I cross cancel? Called it the Jimmy Neutron. Okay. Is there a common factor between 50 and 4? What? What? 2. Two. Two goes into fifty twenty five times, two goes into four two times. Now I have one times twenty five on top and two times one on bottom. Which gives me twenty five over two, which is an improper fraction. An improper fraction that I change to a mixed number. which means I divide 2 into 25. 2 goes into 2 once, to be 2, remainder 0, bring down my 5. 2 into 5 goes 2 times, be 4, remainder 1, no other numbers, so take the 1, put it over the 2. So that is 12 and 1 half. So I have 3 and 1 third times 2 and 7 over 10. So now they're both improper, both mixed numbers. So I have to do this one, 3 times 3, which is equal to 9, plus 1, which is equal to 10, so that's 10 over 3. This one is 2 times 10 is equal to 20, plus 7 be 27, so that's 27 over 10. As I look at those two numbers, what's the common factor between 10 and 10? 10, obviously. 10 goes into 10 once, 10 goes into 10 once. What's the common factor between 3 and 27? 3. 3 into 27 goes 9 times, 3 into 3 goes once. So I have 1 times 9 on top, 1 times 1 on bottom. It gives me 9 over 1, which is 9. I want you to do this one on your own. 7 and 1 half times 4 and 2 fifths. Seven and one half times four and two fifths.
Raise your hand when you have the answer. Grant, what'd you get? 33. That is correct. Now, make sure everybody understands how we got it. 7 times 2 is 14, plus 1 would be 15 over 2, times 4 times 5 is 20, plus 2, 22 over 5. Now we look at cross-canceling. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 22 11 times. Five goes into five once, five goes into fifteen three times. So you have three times eleven here, one times one here. Thirty three over one, which is thirty three. Okay. Any questions? All right, then I'm going to go ahead and turn you loose on your homework. Your homework is five point three. 2 through 33, and 48 and 49. Still got about 25 minutes left in class, so hopefully you can get most of it done. 